Okay. I can't find the end. Only thing left to do is just wrap this up and I'm just gonna start it. Let's do two fingers. It's gonna get all tangled because it's like super long. Doesn't need to be precise. We just want it rolled so that it takes up less room and so that it will naturally unroll. Boy, that was a lot of work. My hair looks crazy now. Uh, so we're all ready to go. My neighbor's going to be power washing his boat in about 20 minutes. So we'll get the talkie talkie out of the way now. And then um, I'll just do a time lapse. So we've got our quilt ready to go. Cleared off the entire dining room table. Because this thing is huge. It's a cow king quilt. And I'm going to do it a little unorthodox. What? Here. Bring you closer. What I like to do, because my binding in, you know, the second part of the binding when you flip it over never looks very clean, normally you would start on the front of the quilt, you would bind the whole quilt, roll it over, and do your top stitching on this side of the quilt, but then it leaves this weird line on the front of the quilt which I never like, so I am actually gonna be attaching the binding, doing that first part to the back side, flipping it over so that the clean stitching is on the front, which I think makes a lot more sense. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. Hopefully I've got the binding all correct. Let's take a look at that. So basically, I have my whole roll of binding here ready to go, and we're going to start on one of the long edges of the quilt and attach it, and then do the corners the way, I'll link the video below, the way that Erica Arndt does the corners. I really liked her tutorial. She has a quilt, quilt making how-to series, which was very helpful. I did go with two and a half inch binding because I was watching the Missouri Star Quilt and that's what, what's her name? Julie, what's her name? <laughs> does it, she does two and a half so that she's got plenty of ease when she rolls the binding to the other side. It's not super tight and it doesn't hurt your hands, which I like. So I'm gonna do a, so this is two and a half inch gives me just a little bit more leeway. And with our crazy quilt here, um, having a little wider binding is gonna be good because it's gonna give us that grounding to the eye, which you want on the edge. So let's get started. Oh, and I'm using like a navy color thread, which I is one of my little rolls. I don't know that I have enough of this thread, so we might be switching to a different color thread, but I just want it to blend in with this fabric. So that's how we're doing that. So I've got my water. You're kind of wonky, but oh well. Um, and we're not gonna like 
clip it to the quilt or anything. I'm just gonna have this rolling bunch here. Um, and I'm just gonna pull from the roll and we're gonna lie it flat. So I'm gonna pick a side to start with. And I just want one of the, a nice long side so that when I flip it over and I have to join the two ends of the binding together, I've got a nicely way to do that. So it's a little clashy with this side, but that's okay. I'm gonna leave a nice tail here so that when it comes time to sew them together, it's not crazy. We're gonna do a fourth of an inch and I'm gonna do, well, I guess I'll do a real fourth of an inch. On this, there's just loose threads everywhere from um, the long arm quilter. I guess that's just what happens when you're laying it. I'm, I'm sure I'm gonna pick up dog hair right now because it's gonna be laying here off the edge of the, off the, edge of the table and my dog's right under the table, of course. So it's definitely gonna have dog hair. We're gonna give this a good wash and dry afterwards just to set everything. And then it should be softer, like each time you wash it and dry it, it should be softer and get that kind of bunchiness that you want around the quilting. So let's get going. It's so weird sewing here. Oh, I just thought of something. You're not gonna see this line of stitching. This can just be my white orofill. Oh, let's do that. <coughs> well, that was a brilliant idea. Um, I need to save the navy for the top stitching. I don't know why I'm trying to use the navy. Here, this is all gonna get covered up. You're not gonna see these stitches at all. So let's save our navy thread for the top and go get our white ore fill. I'm super excited. I'm hoping I can get this done, get it washed and get it on the bed tonight. Cause it's so hot here in Southern California this weekend. It's like totally summer already, which makes me want this on my bed. Okay, so this is easy enough because it's straight binding. I didn't leave myself much of an opening here, but that's okay. So she says to find the center point, which is about five inches. So I'm gonna go two and a half in. Cut that off. And then we're going to overlap this one by a quarter of an inch and cut that off. So it's just really hard to see. In fact, I should probably put that one on top and then go a quarter of an inch. Oh, it's so difficult to cut that. Oh. It makes your heart stop. Okay, and then we have to sew these ends together. So this is the hard part, which is why I should have left myself a little more space here to put these together other than like five inches. Should have left myself a good foot. Okay, so we're gonna sew these together at a quarter of an inch and I just really can't even lay it flat the way I've done it here. 
So this is going to be a challenge. I think I'm going to have to cut out some of these stitches. This is just kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm going to have to seam rip out some of this because this is too, too tight for me to sew. Okay, I think I've got it far enough apart now where we can do this without it pulling. Yeah, I really should have left more room there. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna, it's gonna go back into shape here. And then we're gonna lay this back down and sew it down. If it has like a little bit of slack, we can just incorporate that in as we go here at the end. I'm gonna back stitch to overlap here because I definitely tore some stitches out. And I don't wanna lose that. Okay. <laughs> Back to laying on the quilt. Yay, that's one whole side done. <laughs> now we get to flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the binding, we're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna sew it on the other side. And we're just gonna kind of hold it there. I'm gonna eyeball it, I'm not gonna make it too tight. Oh, we're, we're gonna switch thread. <laughs> so we need our blue thread now. This is going a lot faster than I thought it was going to go. First of all, I thought I was gonna be short on the binding. So I'm very happy that the math turned out correct, or I did the math correctly on the binding. Okay, let's take a look at the video again. And then just pull it to the edge. Now my goal here is that here is my stitch length or my stitch from the front side when I attach my binding to the front, and I want to stitch at least just on the other side. Okay, so I'm supposed to pull it all the way over to cover these stitches and push any loose threads back into the binding. Um, I do have a little more ease in some areas than others, but I'm going to try and pull it all the way because there's definitely some stitching here that she did. When she squared off this quilt, she basically stitched all the way around at a quarter of an inch to secure everything on the edges, so I want to make sure I cover up that. And I'm going to switch to three millimeters. And really the goal here is just to get everything laid down evenly, make sure that it's covered, make sure that it's even, make sure that all of our all of our edges are covered up so that when I throw this in the washer I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, I was really worried when I made this that it was going to be too busy for me with all of these different patterns going on. And I was like, I don't know, maybe I made this too crazy. Um, but it had been gone for like four months. And by the time I got it back, I was like, oh my God, this is so colorful and nice and reminds me of Hawaii. So <laughs> I felt much better when I had that initial gut reaction when I opened it up. So um because Greg was like, well, you better pick a fabric you like for the back of the quilt so that if you are don't like this, we can at least use the other side. I was like, well, that was a good idea. This is so exciting. I can't believe this. Wow. This is just amazing. This whole project has been such a journey, folks. I, 
I mean, it's been a wild ride. So to be at this point is just amazing. To be at the end of this, to know that I made this, I accomplished this, I committed to it through the tears and everything. And now it's gonna be a family heirloom that we can pass down. So that's wonderful. Okay, so as I'm doing this, I'll just get this from a different angle here. So I am flipping it over, covering up that seam from the other side, and then I'm kind of lining it up with the 10 on my foot here, I mean on my plate. Just so that the binding's as even of a strip as it can be. Because I definitely have more give in some areas than others. So I'm trying to have a reference point here so that it's not completely wonky. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm not going for perfection here. I'm just going for, you know, when you look at the quilt, nothing seems really off. That's it, folks. Yay, it's all done. <coughs> okay, so now I'm going to put it on my bed and pull off all the little threads before we wash it. I did want to point out some things. So see how when she tacked it all down, there's these stitches that are definitely out of the quarter inch mark. So I'm going to have to go through and clean that up and pull those. And then, yeah, and then it looks like the long arm quilt machine, I don't know if the thread she used wasn't great or if the, looks like the, the stitch length was super short, but it got all bunched up here. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? So it got all bunched up and there's a few places like that. I can't cut that out without ruining the quilt design. So I don't know whether I should just seam rip that out and try and match up with it. It's not the exact thread color that I have, <coughs> but it might look better than, and you know, over time I'm sure this is gonna pull out. So I'm not sure if that's gonna ruin the integrity of the quilt. And it looks like it happened like in quite a few spots. So like that was a loose thread. It looked like it was bunched, but it was a loose thread. So I think I just need to lay this out, get all the loose threads off, and like reassess. So very happy to have it done. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like once it's on the bed, and then we are done with this project. Um, I do enjoy the process of piecing. Obviously these were squares, so it's a lot easier to put together. The last thing I made was the table runners that had pinwheel design and those did not line up. So I was, I did not do a good job of lining those up. So I have a long way to go when it comes to quilting. But yeah, I think table runners will be my jam. Like if, if I have time or when I'm retired and I do things like this, you know, table runners are perfect uh, amount of stuff, wall hangings. Uh, and then I could quilt it myself. The table runners that I made, I just stitched in the ditch around all of the triangles and the squares, uh, and that worked out fine. So definitely wanted to splurge and do more of a design on this one since it's such a big piece. So, so uh, my huge foray into quilting here turned out pretty good and I will enjoy this for years to come. And I forgot to show you, this is all I have left of the binding. So we did pretty good measuring everything. Um, I think I did an extra strip because I had to round it up to an extra strip. So 
that's pretty good. Not a lot of waste on this uh, binding. And I still have the rest of the yard of fabric, which is probably about a third or a quarter of a yard of fabric left that we can use when we make all of our Hawaiian bags with all of our leftovers. So I have leftovers of all of these fabrics, which I will hopefully be making some cute bags out of. It'll probably be more like pouches with the stuff that I have left over. Um, I was also going to make little sachets, like little lavender sachets with um, pinking the edges and stuff like that. So I will look into that. So here is our finished quilt. Yay! It's all done. Um, of course, when I washed it, it shrank a teeny, teeny, teeny bit. I had already pre-shrunk all the fabric, so not quite sure why it shrunk again, but I had measured and now it's just the teensy bit short on the sides, which means we tend to play tug of war with the quilt. So uh, if I could go back in time, that's the only thing I would change really is just adding a little bit of width on the sides so that we had a comfortable overhang. I had measured the blanket that we like. It has a nice overhang, but I think it just shrank a little bit when I put it in the wash. So uh, other than that, we've really been enjoying it. It's nice and thin, so perfect for the summer months to come. So I really enjoyed the process of making the quilt, especially because it's all squares. So it really wasn't that difficult to put together. The difficult part was laying out all the squares and designing it so that no two things uh, were too close together and really stood out in your eye. Uh, so that was probably the most difficult part of this whole thing. And the fact that I messed up the math the first time, but it all worked out in the end. I would definitely uh, give quilting another go, maybe just not a Cal King quilt. Maybe something like a table runner or a baby quilt or something that um, would be easier for me to actually quilt at home. Very excited for the next time I quilt. I've obviously got lots of scraps from all the bags I've made over the years and I keep all of those scraps for some future quilt project. So yeah, this has been really um, almost a year long process. I would say, what, a few months shy of a year. So it was a, a big project, of course, for four of those months, it wasn't with me. <laughs> so you can minus those out, probably a good six month long project as far as piecing it all together and getting it mailed off and then putting the binding on when it got back to me. So thank you for coming along this journey with me. I hope it was fun for you and I hope you have a wonderful week ahead. Love you. Bye.